dudes to the builder here and in this episode of zig and death we're going to be looking at build modes in zig uh, basically build modes refer to the different ways that we can compile our programs and libraries in zig and um, depending on the build mode uh, you will have uh, different uh, objectives that you want to achieve uh, for example the default mode which is the debug mode has uh, all the necessary information in the binary for you to do debugging of your program while, it, while you're in the development cycle. And also, it doesn't do any optimizations, so the compilation speed is going to be the fastest in debug mode. And that's the default uh, the, uh, build mode in Zig. So um, let's like, look, look at this example. We have basically the same code that we had in the previous video. I, I just trimmed it a bit because we're not going to be uh, comparing allocators. We're just going to be using one version of our list with a general purpose allocator and the logging allocator wrapped around it. And we instantiate the list and we just add a couple of uh, items and then we uh, print out a lookup uh, of those uh, items in the list. First, uh, we use uh, the, uh, the stud log uh, info uh, method, uh, which uses the logging uh, capability in the standard library, um, which pretty much uh, works the same as uh, stud debug print. But you're going to see the difference in a, in, a, in a little bit when we look at the different uh, options in build loads. And um, let's go to our other tab. When we do a zig build just a zig build or a zig build run by default uh, this is in debug mode okay so as you can see we have our different uh, output lines from the logging allocator and we have this line which is from the stud log info uh, methods call and this line from stud debug print so pretty much uh, by default, when you do a normal zig build, or say build run, that's uh, the debug mode is uh, what you are obtaining. Let's take a look at the actual uh, file generated. The, in this case, this is a, a binary executable pro, uh, project. So it'll generate a binary executable inside um, zig out bin. Okay, this is the default, what's known as the prefix location when you build in Zig. Uh, by default, it's going to be Zig out bin when it's a binary executable. If it's a library, it's going to be Zig out lib. Okay. And um, in here, if we see what we have, you're going to see that we have our executable by default. It's going to have the name of the, of the project uh, directory uh, name, as you see here. And um, uh, you can see that it's a pretty big file, 1.2 megabytes. Uh, so um, this is precisely because it includes all the information uh, for debugging, all security checks, which are, are good uh, to have when you're developing uh, your application. Okay. Now, uh, let's see how we can select a different build mode. Um, the other three build modes that we have uh, in Zig are release modes, okay? And this is a concept that you will find in, in other uh, compiled languages where you have the debug mode and the release mode. And usually uh, the difference is that when you're in release mode, you're going to have uh, uh, different optimizations applied to the code when during compilation. And this will make the code uh, execute faster at runtime, but at the same time will make the compilation uh, process uh, take a little longer because more steps have to be done during compilation to optimize the code, okay? Um, the first uh, release mode that we're gonna be seeing is uh, release safe. So you can um, achieve this by a zig build dash d optimize equals release safe okay and with this we are going to build what's known as a, a, a release uh, executable with the safety checks on okay 
Um, since it's a release uh, build, it's going to have optimizations on. It's going to have safety checks uh, in, in, in still like in debug mode that has the safety checks. Um, but um, it, it, unlike debug mode, it's going to it's going to be a, a faster executing program. OK, because it's not going to have any of the debug uh, infrastructure inside the binary. Um, that that you usually use only when you're doing debugging okay so let's take a look at that file in zigout bin and as you can see this time uh it's a lot smaller it's 272 kilobytes okay um let's execute it zigout bin and the name and you're gonna see also that all of our uh, debugging entries here, our, our output uh, from the logging allocator, they're gone. Okay, um, we we only have the output from our uh, stud log info um, line and from our debug print line. Okay, and finally, uh, from once again, this is a debug print that we did at the end. Okay. So in release safe, um, we have these uh, output options available to us. And you're going to see that uh, effectively the file size will be reduced compared to a debug build. Okay. Now, uh, the next mode that we're going to be looking at is release fast. Okay. And release fast will produce a uh, the most optimized binary possible. Um, it'll apply all the levels of the uh, optimization to try to achieve uh, the greatest execution speed at runtime, but at the cost of uh, slower compilation speed. It'll take a little more uh, time to compile because uh, it's doing a lot more work during compilation with uh, optimizations. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the generated uh, binary in zigout bin now we see that uh, the binary is even smaller uh, from release safe um, and uh, if we execute this version we're going to have uh, that now that log info uh, line is gone okay so uh, log output at the at, at, in during a, a release uh, fast execution um, at the info level is gone we do still have debug print because basically the bug print always is going to print to the standard error so these two lines are still available okay so that's uh, a good thing to have in mind when you uh, uh, are compiling in the different build modes depending on the build mode you may have output that is different uh, depending on what you're using. If you're using uh, the stud log facility or uh, debug print, you may have different output. Okay. And the final mode that we're going to be taking a look at is release small. Okay. And this is uh, optimal for if you're dealing, for example, with uh, programming for embedded devices where you have a really, really uh, strict constraints in, in terms of resources and, and, and memory size and things like that. Well, uh, with release small, uh, the, the main uh, priority is indeed uh, achieving the smallest possible executable file. So it may take longer to compile. Um, the safety checks are, are also uh, gone in release small and uh, optimizations are done up when they don't uh, increase the, the binary size. So let's take a look at the binary to see the size. And as you can see, uh, it's it's uh, pretty significant. Okay, it's only 73 kilobytes. Okay, so let's uh, run it. And once again, as you can see, the stud log info and, and all the other logging is gone. We still have uh, available output from debug print. Okay, and on the topic of a uh, small uh, binary size, uh, we also have a couple of options. Let's go back here. I have here 
or uh, the build.zig for this uh, project. And I have a couple of options here that are commented out. One of them is um, we have a, a flag basically that's called strip. And what this does, it'll strip all of the debugging information from uh, the final binary executable. So let's save that to the screen here. Let's take a look once more at that uh, file size. Okay, 73K. Now let's do SIG build really small once again. Okay, and let's look at the file size once again. And uh, in this case, uh, there was no difference. It's still 73K, which means that basically a really small already had removed all of the debugging information from that binary. Um, uh, another option that we have is single threaded. Okay, if you know that your program is not going to be using any type of parallelism or multi threading, okay, you can set this option to true. And this will also uh, probably uh, reduce your binary size. So let's build this again in really small. Okay, let's look at the file size. And yeah, that did have an impact. Now it's down to 56 uh, kilobytes, okay? And if we run it, you see that we have the same output. Um, let's look at the impact of those options for, for example, released fast. Let's see the file size. There you go. It's down to 70 kilobytes. So in release fast with the, with the strip and the single threaded option, it's even smaller than the default release small build. Okay. Um, and let's look at the impact for really safe. Okay, so you can see down to 92. Originally, if I'm not mistaken, it was 272 kilobytes. Okay, so that's a big, big difference in size. So uh, with that, um, that's basically it for the build modes in Zig. You have a lot of flexibility. Um, you can choose depending on your scenario. If you're doing embedded, for example, you go with really small or, or, for, or WASM, uh, WebAssembly. It's also uh, a, 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 a really good option, uh, the really small build mode. Um, if you're in a production environment uh, dealing with uh, mission critical stuff, you should probably use really safe, okay? Because you're gonna want those safety checks uh, enabled. And if, for example, you're doing a game, uh, you're doing game development, and you you need ultimate uh, speed of execution, then release fast is gonna be uh, the uh, option that you're gonna want to use, okay? So with that, I hope uh, this is uh, useful. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.